Unreal Engine is awesome, but there's one problem I had with it when I first started. I always misclicked stuff. Today, I'm going to show you something you can add to your workflow that is going to make your life in Unreal much, much easier. Let's get to it. You might already be familiar with the idea of layers. They're basically folders for your objects that let you hide and unhide different parts of your scene. Here's the same concept in Maya using display layers, and you can see how it hides and disables the dreaded misclick like you get in Unreal Engine. There is a layer tool in Unreal that's similar, but at the time of recording there's no way to easily lock and prevent selecting objects within them. You can only hide or unhide them. Instead of using layers, you can use levels. Here's an example in the medieval game environment that Quixel made and showed off a while ago. You can see how the master level is broken down into chunks for base geometry, dressing, lighting, different buildings, VFX, that kind of thing. And take a look at the levels window compared to the layers one. There's a padlock there as well as a visibility control. That is how we lock and unlock things. See with a layer locked, I can't accidentally click something within it. So how do we set up our own version then? Here's an empty level with not much in it, and to get everything set up we just need to go to the taskbar at the top of the screen and go into Window, then Levels. Then when we get the Levels window, it's a pretty simple interface, you just have the level you loaded up at the top called Persistent Level, then your child levels below that. I'm going to select the Levels drop down and click on Create New, and in the browser window that pops up I'm going to create a new folder for my level. I'll call it Onion Level, because it has layers. Within this new onion level folder, I'll create a new folder called sublevels and then save my level in there. I'm going to call it base geo, then repeat the process to split it out as much as I like. Normally I go with base geo, dressing, lighting and VFX. Then for each one, you want to make sure that they're always loaded when the game is simulated. To do this, you right click the level and go to change streaming method always loaded. This will stop the level disappearing when you render as it won't be blueprint driven, which is shown by the blue circle in the level browser. To use it, simply double click a level and select it and it will turn blue in the level window, then work as normal. If you have the world outliner open, you will see that any object that cannot be selected will be greyed out, so hide anything you're not interested in by going to view options only in current level, to keep things extra easy to work with. Also, if you want to move an object from one level to another, with the object selected, simply right click the level and choose move selected actors to the level. In this example, I have a set created for the interior of a Star Destroyer with the hallways in base geo, set dressing and props in dressing and all the set lighting under lighting, so these are all the lighting fixtures and things. It helps keep things simple and you can also see which one could be locked and unlocked. It's perfect and you might come across a couple of issues. Here's one I come across sometimes, we'll get this pop-up come up, which says act a place outside the bounds of current level. For my purposes, I've not really found this to be a serious issue, it's more of an annoyance. You can disable the error from the taskbar by going to edit, editor preferences, then search for prompt when adding to level outside bounds, just untick it. Another issue you may come across is that sometimes Unreal can be a bit fiddly and not let you select or move things. To fix this, simply select another level, then reselect the one you're working in. I've not found a good fix for preventing this altogether, but that'll get things working again for you. This does appear to be fixed in 4.27 though, so you might not even come across it. I use this method a lot when I'm lighting my shots, and if you'd like to see a deep dive into that, click on here and I'll show you how I do it. Also, if you'd like some more information, I've linked the documentation page for the levels window in the description below, so definitely go take a look at that. That's it for me for today, so bye for now.